Welcome to the Overcoming Mediocrity Podcast, where today's top influencers and entrepreneurs on the rise share empowering stories and ninja tips to become the fuel that ignites a positive change in your life. Our guests don't simply coast through life. They don't let difficult situations stop them. They set big goals, keep their eyes on the prize, and they're joining us today to share insider secrets you can use right now to step into your power and live your purpose. Now, here's your host, Christy Rafino. Are you ready to step into your greatness? Do what you need to do to ensure that the next chapter of your life, your next story will be written your way. Well, hi, I'm Christy Rafino, the host of the show and the creator of the Overcoming Mediocrity Project, where everyday women tap into the power of their stories to magnify their message and elevate their brand. I'm happy you're here because this show is for people like you who are on the edge of change. You're ready to rise up, overcome mediocrity, empower your thoughts, elevate your thinking, and transform your life. Thanks for spending time with me today. Now let's get started. Well, hello, and welcome back to today's episode of the Overcoming Mediocrity podcast. I am Christy Rafino, the host of the show, and I have the pleasure today to be able to introduce you to our next guest, Danica Joan. And I was connected with Danica Joan, oh gosh, less than a year ago, but we have been through a lot together over the last even six months as I worked with her to uh, bring her story to light in one of our Overcoming Mediocrity books. And as I got to know Danica and got to learn a little bit about her and her story and how she is using her journey to help other people, I was really impressed by her. And as a person that went through a high conflict custody situation, um, well, kind of in a sense, I, I realize how this is something that is so needed because when you deal with a divorce um, or splitting up a marriage, uh, the, the people that really suffer, even though at the time, it seems like the husband and wife are the ones that are going through all the drama and the conflict. And what happens is the children kind of get lost. People don't realize the damage that gets done with children. And, and as a child of a early divorced family, my parents were, oh gosh, I was five or six when my parents got divorced. And going through that and then going through that with my children on the other end, uh, being one of the parents and not really recognizing the damage that was being done. Uh, and at the time, you know, we didn't necessarily focus on that because we were so wrapped up in our own, um, the damage that was being done to us and the damage that was just happening in general, that the kids became the victims, even though we weren't doing it intentionally. And so Danica recognized that from her journey and she didn't just feel that it was a, a misjustice, but she actually did something about it. Danica joins us today so she can share how her commitment to restoring families experiencing high conflict custody matters. She is a family advocate and she has been for over 20 years. And she even went on to create a nonprofit called Kids Need Both. Kids Need Both. And that is her way of educating parents and professionals on how to create positive change in high conflict families that gives the children a whole new future. It was through her own heartache that she found her voice as a family advocate. And now she has made it her life mission to help others. With over 20 years experience as an educator, Danica provides families with workable solutions to their custody conflicts. She is a certified family mediator with Florida's Supreme Court guardian ad led lit Ooh. And she's also the author of Florida's Family Stabilization PAR, which I think that is a program that families in Florida have to go through. And that's pretty incredible that she was able to take her wisdom and put it into a program and, and have it become the mandatory piece of the process for, for parents going through their separation or divorce. So 
I would love for you to hang on just a moment because we will be right back and you will be able to meet Danica, see what a powerhouse she is, see how amazing she is. And maybe if you are not experiencing a high conflict family uh, situation, you may know somebody who is. So make sure you share this episode with them uh, because they will be able to really learn a lot from Danica, uh, connect with her so you can take advantage of all of the resources she's created for people in that situation um, so she can continue to go on and help family. So hang tight. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Overcoming Mediocrity Podcast, where you learn to step into your power and live your purpose. Now back to the show with your host, Christy Rafino. Well, hello and welcome to the Overcoming Mediocrity Podcast. We're the podcast for success-driven women who want to empower their thoughts, design their dream careers, and build a beautiful life that's aligned with their destiny, all the while having a lot of fun along the way. And today I am honored to be sharing with you my friend and fellow author, Danica Jones. And she was in, or has been featured, her and her story has been featured in our Overcoming Mediocrity Unstoppable Women Edition that we are right in the middle of producing and on the verge of debuting. So that's been really exciting. And I've really learned a lot about her. She's an amazing woman. And I just can't wait for you to also meet her as well. So welcome, Danica. How are you today? Uh, I'm very good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, this is a, It's been a delight to, to just spend time with you for the last few months developing the, uh, the book. Um, I've learned a lot about myself <laughs> and met some amazing, powerful women. Yeah, you know what we do? We have an, uh, like just a really powerhouse lineup of women in this book. They're all unstoppable for sure. Um, and it's just been really neat to see how you've all connected. You're co-creating different things together. I know you're producing the Overcoming, or no, I'm sorry, the Unstoppable Woman Summit. Um, so it's just been really neat to just see how you've taken this opportunity and you've all turned it into so much more. So it's been really kind of neat. And what do it I think? Look, look at the group of women that we have for this book. You it's, it, it's really, it's so cool to, to be plugged into this, this whole think tank of, of people, of women, and to be able to meet them, you know, they're many states away and to be able to know we can pick up the phone and say, hey, when you, you want to create something really amazing. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Absolutely. It's about powerful women collaborating. We're not competing. We are mm -hmm. supporting each other on our journey. So it's been, it's really neat. So let's talk about you. How did this all start? Because at some point we were connected because I think it was one of our other authors shared that she knew you and she knew that you had an amazing story. You are really making a difference in the world. And I'd love for you to be able to talk a little bit about your journey and what you're creating right now. Well, yeah, it was my friend Donna Eller that introduced us. And she says, you really, this could be something that um, would be a great place to connect. Um, and it's been a really great opportunity to be able to, to be a contributing author in this book, because it's not, even though I knew my story, I had the basis of my story. It was actually through the writing process that I discovered so many things I didn't see before. And um, 20 years ago was when I kind of, my journey ended up uh, choosing its course in working with families going through high conflict custody situations because that was where my journey started. Um, I was going through, uh, I ended up in a marriage that was not healthy. It was very, it was dysfunctional and there were children involved. So it wasn't just the decisions I made were not just for me, but it was also for my children. And, and yet I chose to end the marriage thinking it was going to go one way and it didn't. And I realized I found myself in a, a very high conflict custody situation. So, uh, you know, just sort of going through survival and trying to make the most of, of the situation, I realized, well, wait a minute, this is not a, 
a calling I asked for, but it was kind of thrust upon me to help other families, other parents who were going through high conflict custody situations. So over the course of the years, I created a nonprofit called Kids Need Both, and its mission is to educate those who are dealing with high conflict families, not just the parents themselves, but I also found in my journey that the professionals were not very well equipped to deal with, effectively deal with these high conflict families. So um, that's what I do today is I work with, I'm a mediator, uh, I'm an author of the family stabilization curriculum and I coach families who are going through divorce. Okay. Yeah. Great. So I know when I went through a similar situation, uh, you know, I didn't have the resources and tools that wasn't my career path. So it's an, it's interesting how we kind of went through similar situations, but you chose this to be your mission. This is the, mm-hmm. the thing that you wanted to use. This is the, the, obstacle that was thrown in your life that you decided this was my purpose. Like I want to help other people not go through something like that as, you know, the same thing that you went through. Yeah. You know, typically a a lot of times in the court system and family court, there's a lot of resignation and discouragement. There is kind of a, a, um, even a feel amongst the attorneys that, you know, this is just a lot of drama and we don't know what to do with it. We'll just, uh, just ride it out until they decide that they are tired of fighting. And sadly, the children, ultimately the children are traumatized through this process. And um, I kept, maybe it's just my looking at the world through rose colored glasses kind of attitude, but I really think that there's a positive way to, to deal with, um, with divorce and stuff like that, because ultimately it's not the divorce that traumatizes the children and the families, it's the conflict. And if we can somehow take this emotion uh, out of the situation where it's like a, it's like a winner takes all kind of uh, battle and if we can work things out amicably, uh, like mediation centered versus litigation centered, we could actually change the direction of families. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I know for me in my situation, you know, we didn't have, we, we, we did at one point have to go through mediation, but that was not about the divorce. It was more about the, the custody or the, you know, the visitation schedule. Um, but what happened is we ended up by having this very expensive legal mess. And as a single mom, you know, I was so focused on the, the, the fight and the drama and the money, the bills that were accumulating. I couldn't be a good parent because I was so stressed. I was so reactive. And we are in an emotional situation, no matter how amicable or not that divorce is. But we don't need to have other things added to that drama. And we need to somehow be able to take that emotion out of it the best we can and focus on the kids because they're the ultimate victim and they have no say so in it. So I love what you guys are, what you're doing with your nonprofit. I want you to be able to share a little bit more about that because what you're doing is you're making sure that the kids, the kids have some choice, that they're being represented and you know, we're thinking of them first. So I love that. Yeah. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine who's, who's one of the founders of a divorce professionals like organization nationwide. And she, and her and I were sharing, she says, you know, the legal field doesn't get a bad reputation for no reason, as far as, you know, um, the, the legal process being dragged out and it costing people tens of thousands of dollars and, and, and all that. And, um, and I, I, I've got to believe that there are good people in, those, in all of those fields, but there's a lot of resignation um, in that situation. So, you know, the thing is, is divorce has three ways to go. It can go um, mediation centered. It, uh, it can go uh, like collaborative or it can go litigative. 
and ultimately um, mediation is for the most har harmonious ones. Um, collaborative is um, the next stage. And of course, litigative is if, you, if somehow there can be an, an establishment of trying to filter out those families so we're not pushing everybody into the presumed litigative direction, um, it would make a big difference for families. And, um, and that's what I do with my team uh, with Kids Need Both is to create options for families and actually empower the, the parents because um, the parents need to be in the driver's seat of their uh, custody situation and not just expect that just because you're an attorney that you're going to be the one to take everything, take care of everything. And understanding that parents are sometimes they're in a very emotional, they're in survival mode. They're concerned about um, the roof over their head, uh, being able to have enough money to pay for them to support themselves plus the children. There's just a lot of worries. Um, and that's why we get attorneys to, to, to take care of those things. But um, we've got to remember that we're in, we are the ones in charge and it's our responsibility to, to empower ourselves, maybe even, you know, to find a divorce coach that helps us to think more groundedly and, um, you know, so that we can go in there and make the right decision. A lot of times we go into mediations, make completely unprepared. And we're making decisions for our six month old child or our preschool child that will last 18 years. And I guarantee that that agreement, that parenting plan agreement that, that was okay when the child was 18 months old does not work when they're 18 years. Yeah, and we don't know that. People, parents don't know that. We, you as a professional have the experience on how to guide you know, your clients through all those different possibilities. But if you don't have that, if you're not equipped to be able to handle those, then down the road, as parents, we're set up for more conflict. And that's oh, not for good. Sure. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, you know, um, and that's one of the reasons I've always, always been a stand of presumed shared 50-50 timeshare. Um, presumed, meaning that, you know, you and me, we're 50-50 parents of a child, I'm going to presume that you're just as equipped as me in parenting our children. Yep. So, um, but unfortunately, historically, it's one person is presumed to, to, to take care of the lion's share of the child, yep. and the other one is presumed to, to pay the bills. And that's a very that's, that's a lot of what they're fighting over. Right. You know? Yeah. But, uh, but 50, 50 at 50, 50, there's a lot of things that can shift. First of all, when children get, as they get older, they go from, there's a reason why uh, children are broken into elementary age, middle school age and high school age, because there's actually fundamental shifts that happen with the child. The, an elementary age child is typically like, it's easy to have them shift from one home to another 50-50 because their whole world revolves around their, their family. Yeah. You hit, they hit middle school and, um, and they're just like, wait a minute, I want to go and hang out with my friends. I want to do, I want to, I want to spend weekends with my friends. Well, that's all well and good if both parents are on the same page and they recognize that it's the child's choice. But if, um, but unfortunately, as the child gets older and they are wanting nothing to do with their family and they're wanting more to do with their friends, right. the parents, if they're not in good communication, will point the finger at the other one saying, you know, you're not, um, you're, Ha, you know, they blame each other for why the child is not wanting to be in one home or the other. Right. Yeah. And still the kids are the ones that kind of are the victims because they're kind of caught in the middle and they don't want to let either parent down yet. They want to do what they want to do. So it's just difficult. It's very, very difficult. So tell me how you support your, your families. How does your nonprofit support your families? 
Well, um, well, we have been, my team is, has created a platform uh, community. It's a subscription-based platform community. This has been in the works for a while because we've already, we've been doing conferences every few years uh, and bringing experts in, in a conference structure. And of course, with the pandemic, it shifted to an online uh, conference. Um, and then we discovered something. We discovered that, uh, first of all, we had access to way more families, actually globally, by shifting it to an online conference. But um, we were able to be, uh, so, it, so then we said, well, okay, what's next? So then we created uh, this platform community called Hope for Families. Mm -hmm. And it still has a lot of the, the blog content uh, and the experts, but it also has access to a director of professionals that we vetted and said, you know, these are the people that we would recommend um, if you need any of their services. And what's really special, probably the, the big flagship are the coach-led groups. So like, uh, it might be a six week group where the topic might be, you know, parenting plans or uh, finances or um, whatever topic that our coaches are um, an expert in. We have them lead like a like a curriculum based uh, six week group. And you can join that. And then when your, uh, your six weeks is up, you might want to try a different one. And it's the, oper the design is to make it an interactive kind of conversation so that you can discover things together. And um, versus, I kind, of, I kind of correlate it to like the church structure. So when you sit down for your worship service, it's a, it's a passive activity of being, you know, taught to and it's what it's wonderful you can have some great insights but then it's in those small groups those sunday school classes and stuff like that that you develop relationships and you actually um you know transform your way of thinking and and you are you become more empowered so that's what we've got going um you know to help families along with of course our services that the professionals um the practitioners have available, maybe like a, a course of their own, maybe a self-directed course, or, um, or just utilizing them as, you know, a mediator or a counselor, um, you know, that kind of thing. Wow, that's great. So I love the fact that the platform you've created provides kind of like on-demand uh, resources, support, and community, because when when we're going through situations, no matter what it is, when we can learn from other people and the experiences that they're going through, you know, it really helped, like for me, it really helped me to get a friend that was going through something similar and, or even now in business, finding somebody that I can align with that's going through a similar journey because we can support each other. We can kind of keep, keep each other kind of connected and, you know, encourage, and then you have this whole team of professionals that's providing great wisdom. I love that. I love yeah, that. you know, I, it's something I wish that I'd had 20 years ago. Oh, me too. Um, <laughs> I would love um, and it's because it, you know, you will not run out of people to sympathize and listen to your story, story and listen to you just uh, complain and, and be an upset, you, you'll have lots of people to listen to you. However, that may not be very healthy for you or empowering for you. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I love the fact that you have taken your story and I agree what you said earlier that when we're writing our story, it's a complete self-discovery process. We mm -hmm. kind of intro specter when we kind of look at ourselves from a different perspective because what we do in our books is we want to make sure that we're sharing our stories so then we're focused on the reader like how can we teach the reader reader how can we connect with the reader how can we inspire the reader and then what kind of wisdom do we want to share so can you maybe kind of share one of the nuggets of wisdom that you included with your story for anybody that may be uh, kind of really connecting with your journey and want to maybe learn something from you? Well, I'll tell you, um, at the beginning, 
I, like I said, I knew my story very well. I thought I did um, before I started discovering myself. I realized that, um, you know, my ex wasn't really the bad guy that thrust me into this mission. Um, it was so easy to, to see that because it was right out there. However, over time, I realized what had me even get connected into that kind of dynamic was because of my lack of like loving myself un selfishly. And that's kind of been my thing is love yourself selfishly um, because you really cannot love. Uh, you can't give what you don't have. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true because sometimes we expect our significant other or even, you know, close friends or family to provide us something that we are lacking. Um, and that self-love is something that we should all be filled to the rim with, right? We should all be mm -hmm. just oozing with self-love. And yeah, we can't expect somebody to give it to us if we can't give it to ourselves. And I, I think that the other thing that I also discovered was when you're going, when you're in a situation, you know, um, where it's left you feeling traumatized and stuff like that in a, in a relationship you chose, like I chose that, um, this person to be my husband and I choose and all the circumstances that ensued, there was, there was some choice I had in the matter. And when I really embraced and owned that it was my choice, it actually gave me power. Yeah. That's great. I love that. I love that. Um, okay. So how share your website for your, how do people connect with you? I, I do have some fun questions that I want to ask you, but before mm -hmm. we get to that, I want to make sure that anybody that would want to learn more about what you do and how to get support from your community, how they would be able to reach out. Well, uh, my personal site is danicajone.com. And the uh, organization site is kidsneedbotho.org. I love that. I love that. So what advice would you give to somebody in the audience right now who may be struggling with a high conflict divorce or maybe an upcoming divorce that they feel may be high conflict? Well, I would say the first thing that you need to do before you hire an attorney before anything is to find a trusted coach. Um, a coach will, will uh, and I know this to be true because I have coached many people. They come back to me and they said, wow, everything uh, I started with lots of fear and trep trepidation and I got through it with, with um, everything I wanted not, you didn't get everything, but you got it to end the way you wanted it to end, which was uh, harmoniously. And through having a coach that can actually navigate and guide you um, in the direction, it's, it's like having a trusted friend right next to your side and yeah. Um, yeah. something yeah. I wish I'd had. And so often people go to their friends or family to unload and to dump. And unfortunately, those people are so emotionally connected to you that they're mm -hmm. not giving you the right advice. You know, they're, they're siding with you or sometimes maybe you need to have a different perspective. You know, they're probably, especially if it's a close family person, they are not able to give you unbiased support. So to have somebody that's been through a situation and, and be able to um, support that person in a way that is going to get them the results they want. Not necessarily an instant, yay, I'm on your side, but this is the long-term support that you can give, that they can get so then they are actually winning in the end. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. you know, when you think about it, think about a coach in the context of, of an athletic coach. Yeah. An athletic coach is not gonna tell you what you wanna hear, <laughs> but they have your best interest at heart. Yes. Absolutely. So would somebody look for divorce coach? Like how would they find uh, that type of person to connect with or should they connect with you? 
Well, they certainly could connect with me because on the platform, that's one of the things that we're really, um, really trying to connect people with is get yourself a coach. Uh, people have no idea how mu- how valuable it really is to have that before they um, before they spend tons and tons of money that they don't have anyplace else. I've heard of people fighting over something monetarily small, say like, I don't know, maybe furniture that costs a thousand dollars, but then the fight and around that costs thousands and thousands of dollars. And it, it doesn't make any sense, but unfortunately they're so focused on winning and they're so emotionally charged that it doesn't like, they're not seeing straight. So a coach, like you said, could help people save thousands of dollars because mm-hmm. now you've got somebody helping you kind of see things from a more logical perspective instead of an emotional perspective. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I, wish, I wish this was something that was really around, you know, 20 years ago when I got divorced, <laughs> because that would have been such a great, great resource for me. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So now some fun questions. I have two fun questions for you. What okay. is a book right now that is on your bedside table? Oh my goodness. What is it? Oh, Jamie Hirsch wrote a book about love. Oh. Ah, I can't remember her name. Uh, the, the book. Now I'm going to look at it because it's <laughs> my bedside I table. Totally get it. It's right here. Jamie Hirsch, book about Jamie love. Maybe Hirsch. I can look it up on Amazon really quick. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Jamie Hirsch How and do you she's Jamie J A M I J A M I E. Oh, I'm not finding it. Um, all right. Well, we'll go ahead. If you can get me that, we will put it in the show notes below because I definitely would love to uh, include that. And I'm sure you want to share that with Donna because she is all about love. That is her theme is love. Um, so yeah, that's one question. So the next question, if you can be any superhero. Which one would you choose to be? Oh, superhero. Uh-huh. Oh, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Wonder Woman, yay. I love that. That's she's question. like powerful and she's sexy. Oh, yeah. She is. She is. She is. So awesome. All right, Danica. Well, thank you so much for joining me today on the episode. It was so much fun. Yes, it was. Thank you, Christy. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. And then all of the audience that's listening to this episode, thank you for joining us. Make sure you connect with Danica and the links will be provided below. And we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and visit us and join us for our next episode. Thank you so much and have a great, awesome rest of the day. Thanks for listening to the Overcoming Mediocrity podcast, where we believe that everyone can have the business and life of their dreams once they've learned the art of mastering their story. Mastering our stories is the key to everything we want in life. Our stories can either hold us back or they can propel us to new heights. We can choose. You can choose. Choose to overcome mediocrity with us. Let's achieve greatness together. To learn more, visit www.overcomingmediocrity.org. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast.